last thing before we get started, and that is vote. If you're in America, November elections for the presidency is coming up. Hey weirdos, it's wrap up time. Today we're going to be doing the September wrap up. If you don't know who I am, I'm Emma Abe and I'm the runner of the things on here on this channel. So let's get started. It's about midnight and I'm having dinner. We're not gonna talk about it. The bowl is still very hot, so I don't wanna pick it up and show you, but it's essentially like mac and cheese with beans in it. It's like twisted mac and cheese, except instead of meat, you put beans. Um, and I've discovered that that is very delicious and the new way I love eating mac and cheese. <laughs> anyway, so I only read nine books this, this month. So the first book I read this month, this past month, was The Island of Sea Women by Lisa C. So this is the first book I've read of Lisa C. Lisa C is constantly like coming up in terms of like Asian recommendations. And she has like a huge like body of work. Um, and most of them, if not all, deal with like some sort of like Asian people in general. I think most of them are Chinese representation because Lisa C is Chinese American. But this one, however, is not Chinese, like Korean focus, like focuses primarily like on these women divers. So I was like talking a lot about like the society of women where their main methods to feed their family and put food on the table was doing diving. It follows these two girls, one of them, they're both friends, and it follows their journeys like growing up for, through like Japanese controlled Korea all the way up in like modern day Korea. So that was really, really cool to look at. I don't off the top of my head like remember any of their names, but one of the cool things that I think Lisa C does a really good job at is just crafting worlds and crafting culture. She does a really good job like demonstrating what the average like culture is for a person or without having to say okay these are the marriage rituals she does a really good job of showing those cultural aspects and things that you would learn more about in a anthropology class that particularly like re revolves around like a certain culture she does a really good job integrating those into the narrative so you still like after reading one of her books, you will get the picture like beginning at the end of kind of how society works, which I greatly appreciate and I want to see more in novels. So if any of you guys have any recommendations like that, let me know in the comments down below. So The Island of Sea Women, this is her latest book, I believe. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it like a four out of five because I really enjoyed it. There was nothing that I like didn't like about it. I think my favorite part of it was just being introduced to this culture, like just through the events of someone's lives. Um, and I need to turn off the water. I also realized I did not plug in my microphone, which is so much fun. Yeah, I would recommend it. So next is The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane, also by Lisa C. I read a lot of Lisa C this month, given that I only read nine books. <laughs> so this one follows this young girl. She's like an Akka. I think that's like the Chinese minority group that she's from. I don't like want to spoil anything, but mm, I don't think it's too much spoilers because it happens in like the first third of the book and it's in like the description. She gets pregnant out of wedlock, which is like a huge no-no in like her society. She gives up the baby and it winds up getting adopted by an American family. You mostly follow this woman as she's going through her life and dealing with, with the obstacles and a changing world in China, but you also get flashbacks to her daughter and kind of what her daughter is going through, um, being raised um, with this white family, which I thought was really interesting. The one thing that I will say about the ending that kind of bothered me, um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I wish there was like more if the story had continued for like another chapter or two so we could get those like interactions with everything that was revealed. I just felt like it ended very abruptly and I was very much looking forward to all like the conversations that would be had um, surrounding how the ending happened. It, it takes place like mostly in Yunnan province and I have like this connection to Yunnan province and it was just like really weird for me because it didn't like actually say like Yunnan province until about halfway in through the book. So I was like, okay, like where, where, where is this taking place? I know this is taking place in China somewhere because that's why I specifically like 
checked out this book and then it was like you don't province and I was like well fuck shit me okay <laughs> it was just um unexpected um but actually quite like a pleasant thing so yeah the same strengths that the island of sea women has this one has too it does a really good job of showing you this culture without like bashing it into your head it, it's a really good job and I of doing that and I just really appreciate that <laughs> I want more books to do that Anyway, the next book I read is actually a physical copy that I have, and that is 1421, The Year China Discovered America. And this is very similar to They Came Before Columbus because it essentially is an argument for why the Chinese found America first. I thought it was very interesting. I could have dealt with like less of the author, like self-inserting himself into the narrative. I know he was doing a lot of like the research, but could have done with less of the, oh, like I followed these maps and I was able to find this place. I, I didn't really find that too interesting. I would have preferred to like just focus like on the research. What I did prefer is that they did spend a lot of time like at the beginning explaining the cultural history of like China and what was going on at the time. I think if I'm comparing like they came before Columbus and 1421, which is like an obvious comparison to make because they're both basically making like the same, same premise just with Africa versus China. And I, I think that this one has a little bit more like evidence to back it up just because of they actually have found wreckages along the coast, especially like the West Coast, then we don't really have those for like the they came before Columbus the African hypothesis however like the whole time I was reading this I kept saying like because he would say things like oh we found like Chinese DNA like with these people and they knew some Chinese words but at the same time I was like like how was that different than like the migration patterns that just happened like naturally with humans because if you don't know it's theorized at least mostly now that they went from that there was a land bridge connecting Alaska and Russia and people walked over the land bridge and then made it to America that way. So I, I just, that's kind of like how I was thinking like the whole time I was reading this book. Not to say that I don't think it's possible that the Chinese came. I think it very, it very much is. I would assume that the Chinese would integrate into native society rather than native society integrating into Chinese society just because of like sheer numbers on like both sides. If you want me to talk more about this in depth rather than like my ramblings then let me know. I can do more in depth and be more structured in my thoughts than I am right now but that's how I feel about this one. Um, I did think it was good and I did think it was interesting so if you're interested in a lot of archaeological stuff this one's probably for you. My bowl is cooled down so I can actually show you. So yeah, it's got like beans and, and mac and cheese. It's delicious. Next book I read is Catch and Kill the Lies, Spies, and Conspiracy to Protect Predators by Ronan Farrow. And I read this because of the booktube prize. I'll link my video explaining most of my thoughts. But I essentially thought that the focus on this was on Ronan Farrow when it should have been on the women. This discusses the breaking of the Harvey Weinstein case, a very important case. It was written very well. I understand why people like it. I just didn't like understand like the hype. So for me, it's more of like a three. I did read this with like audiobook and following along. The next book I read is The Rape of Nanking by Iris Chang. And oh my God, this is a really hard book to read. Don't read it if like you're emotionally vulnerable or anything. But if you are interested in reading it and your library doesn't have it, well, it's included in like the odd, it's one of those ones where you can just like get it and you don't have to use a credit for it. So that's nice. I didn't figure that out until after I read this book, but that's kind of cool. And now I actually own the audiobook for this. It was very well written. I was kind of astonished that there's not a lot of talk about the rape of Nanking in history books as the author describes. I know personally in my history classes, we didn't really talk too much about the Rape of Man King. I mean, all we kind of talked about would be like one or two sentences saying like, yeah, the Japanese came to China and they raped and killed a bunch of people. And that was it. There was no like in-depth talk about it the way we would talk about like the Holocaust, which is like problematic in my opinion. I do think that like the Japanese just like not acknowledging like what happened is not okay. They should at least say like, hey, sorry, we fucked up. It was really interesting and sad to hear like the different stories of the actual victims 
And if you want to know more about like all of that specific stuff, obviously read this, but it was really also interesting to see the stories of the people who set up like this neutral zone in order to help protect the people of Nanking. Some of those stories were really awesome and really interesting. And then we got to the Nazi person and I just was like, it was really hard for me to personally like think that this person was a good person. Obviously like what they did was like awesome, but also they're a Nazi. And in my opinion, if you're a Nazi, like uh, it's really hard to redeem you. <laughs> and I think that this person got about the, like the closest because he kind of like did the way that like, the book describes it is like he kind of was like the Chinese like version of Schindler, except he's still white. He was just helping like Chinese people escape from the Japanese, not Nazis. Yes, but he's still a Nazi. And <laughs> that that's like, that's how I feel about that. Anyway, the book is really, really good. Read it. I think, yeah, I would definitely give that one a four out of five also. Sorry, I'm making this kind of short because I didn't have a lot of books and I have to edit this in less than a day and I have homework and I want to go to bed because it's almost 1 a.m. The next book I read was Snowflower and the Secret Fan by Lisa C. This one I didn't enjoy like as much as I did the other ones. Again, the strengths of the other two Lisa C books are still in this one. It does a really good job of explaining the culture um, without like holding your hand through it. And I really, really appreciated that about this book. I just felt like there were a lot of narrative similarities between this one and the Island of Sea Women because it kind of deals like with the same thing with like two really good friends and for one reason or another there's a fallout and there's like a resolution at the end for various reasons. So in that way I thought it was like a little bit like repetitive in her work. I do know that she read, wrote Snowflower first. I don't know, I have to read more of her books to see if I think that there is this same like repetitive theme. Um, but again, it's such an interesting story to hear about, you know, these like Chinese women essentially like the descriptions of foot binding is horrifying. Yeah, I I don't recommend foot binding. I don't think anyone does. That that whole talk about like foot binding and its importance like within the culture was oh like interesting. Next is Normal People by Sally Rooney. This was nominated for like the fiction or something in the Goodreads Choice Awards. And I, I thought it was fine. I don't think it was really like to my taste in terms of fiction. The writing style wasn't bad. I just, it just didn't like mesh with me super well. I didn't particularly like care about either of the characters. A lot of people are praising it because you get to see like both perspectives like within the same paragraph. In my opinion, that's not novel. Maybe that's just me. Um, I do get why people like it. I just didn't really care that much for the story. I felt like there was just things, I still had questions by the end. And maybe it's just a level of art that like, I just don't understand. Yeah, so for that, like, I'm gonna give it a three because I just don't really care. Don't hate me. The next is Blood of Olympus by Rick Riordan. This is the last in the like Heroes of Olympics series. So this is the last of the second series. And the next series is like the Trials of Apollo. I like liked it to like a certain extent. I didn't hate it. I think it's about like a four for me. It didn't, it's not like spectacular. It didn't like blow me away or anything, but all of Rick Riordan's strengths are still there. I just like exploring like the world, like with these characters. Is it bad if I don't really have much else to say? In terms of like a conclusion to like the story, I felt like it, it was pretty good. I liked their creative like solution to the problem. I will say Nico. Nika, we love you, but you have to stop falling in love with straight people. I, I understand it's hard. Um, I myself have fallen for straight people. It's not a fun time. You need to move on. <laughs> you, you just, you just, I feel like you spend so much time in this series, like pining after this straight person. And sorry if that's a spoiler that um, Nico is not straight, but I'm just like, you, you need to move on. You can't sit and pine because then you're just sad and we love you and I want you to be like the best that you can be and find love. And you're not going to do that by sitting and pining for people. That's just not going to happen. You'll just be sad. Spoilers, he gets over it by like the end. So I'm glad. I don't know if like there's any more Nico in the following. 
it'd be cool to see like where else like the characters go. I'm excited to start the trial of Apollo because I want to like see where that goes. All I'll say is it's really weird to be reading Lore Olympus right now because I've also been keeping up with that where you have Ask Apollo and then you have Apollo who's like like not Ask Apollo and it's just it's just hard because they're derived from like the same person in Greek mythology Apollo. Ask Apollo is not like his name in Lore Olympus, it's still Apollo, but just everyone terms him Ass Apollo because he's an asshole. So the very last book that I read this month is Persuasion by Jane Austen. And I like this fair enough. Um, I did feel like there was just a lot of like shenaniganery of, oh my God, I think he likes me, but does he like me? Ah, it was lots of that and like, I get it. Like I get, I've, I've, I've done that. I've been that person. It's annoying. <laughs> it's annoying to be that person. But at the same time, I'm just like, literally just fucking ask. I can't, or just like, it, like the worst that can happen is they say, no, I don't. And trust me, I'm gonna sound like a fucking hypocrite if you guys know me in real life. It is cute. Like when they come together, because it's cute. I mean, if you like Jane Austen, this is, this will be the book for you. It's not my personal favorite Jane Austen. Like, I think I'll give it about a three because it's just like meh to me. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. Maybe we just have to reread it um, because I wasn't super like focused when I was reading it. I think that's going to be it for me. I still have to finish my macaroni, but I'm probably going to crawl into bed and continue watching the current Chinese drama that I'm watching because holy fuck are those addicting. And continue reading some of the books that I've been reading and maybe get a little bit more homework done, but also I might not because I'm just might sleep. All right, so goodbye. It's so good to like talk to you guys and stuff and I'll see you guys next week.